Uh, so I've been involved in the natural resources mining sector for almost two decades. Um, I grew up in Perth, Western Australia, so you could almost say that mining is somewhat in my blood. Um, I've had a range of different experiences. I've worked at a mining company, I've worked at an investment bank, uh, and I've been working at BlackRock for 11 years now. Uh, I've been co-running uh, the World Mining Trust uh, since 2015, uh, so that's my experience. Yeah, so the purpose of the World Mining Trust is really to provide a diversified global exposure to the metals and mining sector with a focus of maximising total shareholder returns that are on offer. Uh, most of the fund is invested in listed mining equities, but we also use the full features of the investment trust where we use the gearing facility, we invest in royalties, we've had some great success investing in private companies, and we also do some call writing as well. And all of this combined is, once again, to maximise the total shareholder returns on offer in the sector. So our idea generation process is, is pretty dynamic. It's a combination of top-down and bottom-up. From a top-down perspective, obviously, we're in focused on looking at the outlook for the individual commodities. We spend a lot of time trying to understand the demand outlook in China, demand outlook more globally. Uh, and we're also spending uh, a lot of time looking at the role that metals and the mining sector has to play uh, in the energy transition and the, and the really positive demand drivers from that. Uh, from a bottom-up perspective, we spend a lot of our time meeting companies. You know, we're really focused on understanding companies' uh, growth um, prospects, um, the strategy of the companies, their approach to capital allocation, uh, and then ultimately, you know, how cost inflation is looking at the sector and where we believe those companies can generate value and growth over time for, for shareholders. Now, when we look at that bottom-up analysis, a really important component of this is ESG. You know, we have an edge on this because we have a team that's got the ability to travel out to assets. We get our hard hats on, our boots on the ground, and we really understand the company's approach to local communities, uh, their safety performance, um, how they're interacting with host governments, host nations, etc. What we tend to see in the mining sector around ESG is that companies that have got a good approach to ESG typically have less risk in their businesses versus companies who have a poor approach to ESG. So it is something that we're, we're, we're very much focused on. So ultimately, when we think about constructing the portfolio, we're really trying to marry this top-down view on the sector with this bottom-up view on the companies. And that helps us form this sort of virtual mining company where we believe we can pick the best assets, the best commodity mix, and ultimately the best exposure for shareholders from investing in this sector. So when you look at the breakdown of total shareholder returns in the mining sector, interestingly, what you see is that around half of it comes from growth and around half of it comes from income. So we very much try to look at both uh, in the portfolio. I would say from a growth perspective, um, there are some tremendous opportunities that are available for those companies that are providing the industrial metals that enables the energy transition. Here you can think about um, the steel that's going into wind turbines, the battery materials that are going into an electric vehicle, the upgrades in the grid and the copper that will be required towards that. So across quite a, lot, a suite of metals, uh, we see some really interesting dynamics playing around, out around the energy transition. Uh, from an income perspective, uh, this sector does provide an attractive yield um, and attractive income returns. Uh, if you look at the companies today, uh, they've got very strong balance sheets, um, they have attractive dividend policies and these dividends are typically covered uh, by cash flow and there's a clear um, requirement as, as a result of companies' new capital allocation frameworks to return uh, excess cash flow to shareholders. So really from our perspective, when we think about maximising uh, the total returns from this sector, we're going to use a combination of both income and growth. So when we think about the outlook for the next 12 months, uh, we've now seen China reopen, uh, but admittedly it has been more disappointing than we would have thought about uh, 12 months ago. Um, you know, we've seen areas of strength, which has largely been uh, investment into low carbon technologies, renewables, but there's been areas of weakness and that's largely been linked uh, to the property market in China. What we are encouraged about when we look forward into 2024 
uh, is that the uh, government um, has indicated that there is going to be more support, more stimulus uh, to, to support the economy into next year. When we look at the individual commodity markets, uh, we generally see that they're tight. Uh, inventories are low, and this really has been a function of the underinvestment uh, into new supply that we've seen over the last almost decade now. Uh, in terms of the companies, um, you know, the, they are uh, very well positioned, strong balance sheets, uh, attractive income characteristics, being prudent in how they are uh, growing new supply and making sure that there are attractive returns uh, associated with that. And then finally, I think from a longer term perspective, in the area that I am most excited about uh, for the mining sector more broadly, is the role that it has to play in the energy transition. Now, quite frankly, we cannot have the transition to a lower carbon future without the underlying metals and materials to build it out. So that's what's you know, really compelling to me over the next couple of decades.